I can't. I know it can't necessarily be helped, but the second I jumped into the meeting, your cough like blew out my eardrums. Oh shoot! Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. I just thought it was really funny, like the timing of it all. It's like joined, bam. <laughs> Mental flashbang for.
Hey, how's it going? Yeah, almost Friday. Thank goodness. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not, it's not anything that's due. It's just a, it's just a fun activity. And so, um, you know, it's, it's just to help facilitate that, uh, but you're not turning anything in. Today, today's going to be mostly a chill because, you know, we've been going pretty hard. Uh, I'm sure you guys are going really hard in all your other classes. So I figured this would be a nice day just to um, do something fun. And so it's just a, just a for fun thing. <laughs> Hopefully not too much.
All right, it's uh, one o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good afternoon, Professor. Good. Oh, uh, well, how about you? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we made it to the end of week 10. So it's, uh, you know, right, uh, you know, we're going, we're going right along, right? All right, and so uh, today, so today I, I thought we'd do something fun. And so there's, uh, you know, I'm not, there's not anything I'm gonna test you on, or, you know, you'll, you'll never see this again, but, you know, it kind of fits within this theme of the class, which is engineering economics. And, you know, we've done all this, um, all of these economic analyses, but, you know, um, I think another interesting thing about business and economics is, you know, how you can, uh, or what are the mindsets and what are the tools that you can need to, you know, maybe start your own company or maybe launch a new idea, okay? Uh, and so this is part of a, actually a broader initiative from the, from the entire uh, ECS college um, to kind of breed more kind of business-like or entrepreneurial thinking in our, in our students. Because, um, you know, you guys come up with a lot of really cool ideas for, for new products. And, you know, just that's just kind of a natural thing of, of being in such a technical field like this, in such an application-driven field. Uh, but what we found over the years is that, you know, a lot of our students don't have the mindset or don't have the, uh, you know, um, the tools to really take those ideas to market. Right. And it's a shame because I think a lot of the a lot of the ideas that um, a lot of, um, you know, our students have is, you know, could have a, a lot of really good potential to really shake up the market and be really successful. And so, um, you know, we're trying to launch a lot more of these initiatives. And so, you know, if you were, if you recall kind of earlier in the semester, too, I, I put out some information on uh, some workshops given by the business school as well um, by one of our one of our close colleagues, um, Dr. Atul Tekshindani. Uh, and so this this is actually his workshop too that I'm 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 piloting for for today. And so um, you know I thought this would be kind of a nice time for it, um, just because uh, you know we're we're just about finishing up with the economic section. Um, you know, right before next week, you know, we're going to start ethics. Um, and so I thought this would be kind of a nice place. And also just you know I know I know you guys are really busy at this time of the semester, so I thought having a fun workshop at at this time of the semester would be kind of a nice uh, nice breath of fresh air. You know when. I know a lot of you guys are struggling with the uh, with all the homeworks and with all the exams, you know. So, you know, having some fun and, and smiling a little bit, I think, is important for, for this time. Okay. All right. So, but but before we get started, I, I do have a couple of announcements. And so, uh, remember, that our midterm exam is going to be next Thursday. Speaking speaking of midterms, right? And so that's a week from today. Um, I did post a poll on the Canvas site, and so um, you know, if you want to go to that poll and, and vote for the topics that you feel most uncomfortable with with the for the upcoming exam. Uh, please go ahead and do so. And then tomorrow, I'm uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm going to be filming a, a review video to help you guys study. Okay. Uh, question of four for one. No, uh, four for one midterm will be the week after that. Yeah, it's not next week. Yeah. All right. Um, so please go ahead and, and vote in the poll. So the poll I think is going to close tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, because that, that's when I get into the office. And then you know I'll I'll, I'll film the review video around uh, around there. Okay. Uh, and remember, homework five is, is out there as well. So make sure you're working on that. Um, I believe that's due next Tuesday. Um, and so, um, you know, because because homework five is due, you know, so close to the exam, uh, as soon as the deadline passes for homework five, I'm going to post the solution so that um, you can use that to help you stay. OK. All right. Um, and, you know, before we uh, before we really get started today, you know, hopefully everyone was able to check their emails because there is a handout. Um, that's going to be used to, to facilitate the workshop for today. Okay, and so it's it's you don't have to turn it in. Uh, in fact, you know if you send it to me, I, I I'll just send it back or I'll just delete the email. And so it's just a, it's just kind of a for fun thing. And so you know I, we just need the handout to help kind of facilitate the activity. But you know it's it's just for fun. You know you're not turning anything in, so you know don't don't stress about that. Okay. Um, all right. And so you know, and so if you haven't downloaded that that handout, you know please uh, please go ahead and do so. Um, and so in about, you know, I'd say 20, 30 minutes, we'll, we'll actually get to the activity that you're going to use with that, uh, with that handout. Okay. All right. And so there, are there any questions I can answer before we, uh, we get started? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and, and get rolling. Oops. All right. And so, you know, the, the first, the first question that I, I, I want to kind of start us off with today is, uh, you know, what just, in general, what does an entrepreneur do? And so what, what is an entrepreneur, right? Um, and so probably, you know, you guys have probably heard the term before, right? Um, and so entrepreneurs are, you know, they're mostly associated with, you know, business people, right? And so entrepreneurs are people that launch a new business, you know, 
maybe they become super successful, but you know, maybe not, maybe their ideas flopped, but you know, we don't think, we don't think of entrepreneurs as, you know, engineers most of the time, because we think that's kind of outside of our, um, you know, outside of our expertise, right? As engineers, you know, or at least the way people think of engineers is, you know, we're kind of the, you know, the nerds, the nerds that kind of work on the calculation that, you know, um, that wear kind of the glasses and the trench coats and stuff like that. But, uh, but, but you, what, what I hope, but what I hope to, to convince you of after today's lecture is that there's a lot in common between entre entrepreneurs and engineers. And I think encouraging that thinking within engineering is, you know, I think is ultimately going to be a good thing. Okay. And so, you know, a kind of a broader um, definition of entrepreneurs is, you know, is entrepreneurs look at the world as it is and then ask what it could be. Okay. Um, and so entrepreneurship is, is, is a lot more deep than just, you know, someone that comes up with a new business, with a new business, right? Um, because honestly, you know, anyone can do that. Anyone with, with money can, can come up with a business. Okay. Um, but you know, the one, the businesses that are actually successful are the ones that go out there and actually solve a, solve a problem. Okay. And so forming a new business and making a new product is, is, is more than just, you know, someone with a big, with a big ego, right? And so usually the most successful products out there are the ones that actually go out and solve a problem, okay? And so before you actually go out there and create a new business or create a new idea, you know, the first step that you have to do is to understand, you know, what the world is like right now. What are the issues that are plaguing it? What are the problems that people are facing, right? In other words, you know, you must understand the current conversations taking place before you can create something innovative, okay? Um, and so, you know, there's no good business idea and, and really there's no good engineering product that can result, you know, without this kind of reflection taking place first, okay? Um, and so, you know, if even, and so even if you go work for a company, right? So let's say that you, you, you get a good job at a good company, this is, a, uh, this, is, this is kind of a thought exercise that all companies are doing uh, to make sure that, you know, whatever products that they make are successful, okay? Okay, and so, um, you know, why do it this way, right? And so, um, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, when, when you think of, of, of someone creating a new idea or, or a company creating a new product, you know, you don't, you don't really think about those people going out and, and really studying the world as it is, right? Uh, but let's look at the alternative and see what happens when, um, when someone doesn't do this, right? And so, uh, you know, they try to make a new product or they try to make a new business just kind of for the sake of it. Um, or, you know, in this person's case, they just think it's really cool. Okay. All right. So we're going to, we're going to do some story time now. And so we're going to tell the story of a certain device uh, called the Segway. Okay. And so, you know, we're going to go back to kind of the early 2000s. And so in, in January, 2001, um, this very famous um, entrepreneur named Dean Kamen, um, re he kind of leaked out that he was about to release something he called game changing. Okay. And so, um, and, you know, he got a lot of really big names to kind of back him up on this. And so um, Steve Jobs, you know, rest, rest his heart. Uh, Steve Hobbs, Steve, even Steve Jobs said it was a really big deal, that it was even a bigger deal than the personal computer, right? And so this is something that's going to revolutionize the world, right? Um, and another big name was uh, John Doerr. And so this is a, you know, if you don't know, he's a, he's a big time venture capitalist. Uh, he helped with kind of the creation of Amazon and Netscape. And so even he said that this might be even bigger than the internet. So very, very high expectations, you know, very, a, very, a lot of hype going into this, okay? Um, and, um, you know, and, and eventually more details came out that this entrepreneur, Dean Kamen, had evidently been working on this, um, you know, for over a decade and spent over 100 million of his own dollars building it, okay? And in 2001, or December of 2001, he announced what it was, okay? So, and the product that he was working on was a Segway, right? And what he deemed it was, it was a personal transport machine, okay? And so it can go, um, at the time, it could go five to 17 miles per hour and 17 miles on a single charge. And it would cost um, consumers anywhere between $3,000 and $8,000, okay? And, you know, when it was released or when it was revealed what it was, you know, what Dean Kamen said was that the, you know, the Segway would be what the car was, um, you know, uh, when the car, when um, compared to the house, the horse and buggy, right? And so, you know, before the car came out, you know, everyone was, was you know, being transported around with horse and buggy. But when the car came out, it made the horse and buggy obsolete, okay? And so, Pete, and so what he, he honestly thought that, you know, once he invented the Segway, then people were just going to stop driving cars and just, you know, use his thing because he thought it was really cool, okay? 
And so what he expected that, you know, after he released it, you know, in 2002, he expected that he would sell 40,000 um, units in, this, in the first year. So, you know, he's being a little bit, a little bit modest, right? Um, but, um, you know, um, do, does anyone want to guess how many, how many of these he actually sold? Around 5,000? Close. Yeah, actually, uh, actually very close to that. Um, actually, yeah, it's uh, around there. And so I, I actually don't have the numbers for the exact first year, but I do have the numbers for the first six years. And so for this first six years, he only sold 30,000 of these. And so in six years, he didn't even hit his first year targets, right? And so what this said was that, you know, people, people didn't want this, right? Like the, uh, the device that, you know, even Steve Jobs said it would be bigger than the personal computer, it, it was a huge flop, right? And, and you almost see none of these anymore. Uh, and in fact, you know, the, the places where you do see it is, is kind of as a joke. I think like Paul Bart drove one of these around as, as a mall cop, right? Um, and so, you know, it was, it was just wasn't successful, right? Um, and it was even more, it's even more crazy in considering, you know, how much, um, how much success this was projected to, to have based on Dean Kamen's uh, pedigree, right? And so Dean Kamen, he, he wasn't just some schmuck, like he, he actually did have a lot of success before, you know, developing medical devices. And so like he was actually already set to go, like he had factories and he had manufacturing plants ready to produce 40,000 of these a month. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, it was, uh, it was not the success that he, uh, um, that he thought, right? Um, and so, you know, this kind of begs the question of, you know, why, why not, right? All right, question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, it was, it was kind of rebranded, you know, many years later as the hoverboard, right? whenever, when it uh, didn't have the handlebars and the, uh, um, and the big stick in the middle, yeah. Um, and so the question is, you know, why, why wasn't this a success, right? Um, and so in the end, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, when this kind of first came out, a lot of cities actually banned it from their sidewalks because it was, it was becoming a hazard to pedestrians. And, you know, when this, if this thing could only drive at 17 miles per hour, you know, 17 miles per hour, there's no way it was going to go on the streets either because, you know, cars would just run over it, um, you know, without any problem. So it couldn't go on the sidewalk. It couldn't go on the streets. And so there's really nowhere that you could ride it. Um, and so the only places where it actually was used was in warehouses and by, uh, and by police and, and by mall cops. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, the, a big reason why we can say that this didn't succeed was that, you know, Dean Kamen, the, the inventor of the Segway didn't really do his research beforehand. And so, um, you know, instead of, you know, doing market research and seeing, you know, what are some struggles that people are having today? He kind of just, he literally just kind of went into a cave. He went underground into his lab and then he, tr he basically tried to come up with something that he thought was really cool. And then he tried to rely on marketing and all his really powerful friends to try to sell it, you know, but even that wasn't enough to make this uh, a success. Yeah. Did Mona burn up like hovers? I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually not sure um, about, about that, but, um, and so, you know, this is, and so this is this, and so this serves as a, as a really great lesson. And so, um, you know, on the one hand, it, it's funny to laugh at, but it, on the other hand, you know, it's, it's good to, to learn too, that, you know, if you want to create a successful product, you know, you need something more than just um, a really cool piece of technology and, and really rich and powerful friends, right? Um, you actually need to do, you actually need to invent something that people will want to, to have. Because um, if you don't, then people just aren't going to buy it, right? And I think this is, this is a really important lesson for engineers too, because I think as engineers, we get, we get caught up a lot in, in you know, and what I like to call like the technical details of our work, right? And so, you know, a lot, I think a lot of us are, are engineered just because we think the science itself is really cool and the technology itself is really cool. Um, but in the end, you know, if the technology that you're creating doesn't have a use to people or if it doesn't solve a problem that they're having, then no one's really going to sell it or no one's really going to buy it, you know, no matter how cool you, you think it is, okay? All right, any questions on, uh, on this so far? Mall cops would definitely buy them. Yes, yes. And I think mall cops uh, do buy them. Yeah. I, I will say that, you know, when you're walking around the mall and you have a mall cop coming at you with the Segway, it, it does make them a little bit more intimidating, um, but intimidating in a, in a comical kind of way, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> I guess intimidating from the, from the perspective that they can run over your foot and it would hurt a lot, but not intimidating in the way that you would take them seriously. <laughs> All right. Okay, and so let's 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 talk more of a of a more successful story, right? And so, what happens when you when you do you know actually take the effort to understand the world? Okay, 
Um, and so, you know, let's talk about some products that actually did succeed. And maybe, and maybe these products, you know, maybe they, they don't get the same publicity as, as maybe the Segway did. Um, but a lot of times you, you, met, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to measure success by in terms of, you know, um, how much publicity you get, okay? And so all of the examples that are, are given here, um, these are from, um, it's, it's a little bit outdated, but it, it came from the Time Magazine's list of best inventions in 2018. So, you know, at this point it's a few years old, but I think, you know, a lot of these lessons still, still hold really well. Okay. All right. And so the first example that I want to give is this wheelchair right here. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, over the years, you know, wheelchairs really haven't changed all that much. Um, you know, wheelchairs are just, are, are really bulky and, you know, it's really hard for them to traverse over difficult terrains. Okay. Um, but, you know, um, what this company did, and so this company, um, you know, I'm actually not sure what the company is. I'm sorry, I apologize. But what they did was they 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 went and they talked to a lot of wheelchair users, and they asked them, you know, what are you know what are some things that you wish could could be better about your wheelchair, or what are some problems that you're having with your wheelchair, and what are ways that we can improve it. And so you know they did a lot of their research and talking to people, and they came up with this product here, right? And so this product is the W H I L L uh, Model C I wheelchair, okay. And so this wheelchair by itself can, run, can ride up to 10 miles indoors and outdoors. And the wheels and suspension systems here are designed so that it can easily climb up obstacles that are up two inches in height. It can navigate really easily in cramped quarters and it can be disassembled in minutes. And so, you know, basically all of those features are, you know, are features that wheelchair users are, are you know, they really would really like. Um, and this company was able to address all of this, right? And so in his first, and so in just in his first few months, um, you know, this sold 10,000 units, um, you know, just, just like that. And, you know, when you, when you think about, you know, how many wheelchair users there are in the world, you know, 10,000 is a lot for their first couple months of, of business. So this is, this has been a really, really successful product. Right? All right. And so the next, uh, and so the next product that we'll talk about is uh, uh, 3D printing, right? And so this is a, what you're seeing here is a 3D printer for a, for a house, right? And so what this product does is that it, it uh, um, basically allows um, the construction of a, you know, a small house, but a, you know, a house nonetheless of a 350 square foot house to be built in under 48 hours, right? And so this is basically affordable, fast, affordable housing for, you know, for, for areas that really need it, okay? And so this, this 3D printer um, basically erects the, the, uh, the basic structure from concrete. Um, and it does it, you know, without anyone really having to be there, right? Because normally when you make a house, you need tons of laborers and you need to, you, you pay for a ton of costs, a ton of liability and things like that, okay? This machine handles all of that. And so, you know, this can, this can basically construct houses um, at a fraction of the cost at, at a fraction of the time too, right? And so this, this invention was made to solve the issue with affordable housing and, and uh, you know, in, in rural areas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, housing prices are, are crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So this is so this was a really cool invention because you know this this was another company that that looked at the world and said you know there's there's a huge you know housing crisis where people are you know are just either can't afford um, you know a, a basic housing for themselves and there's just not enough houses out there for for people and so they created this uh, this product in order to solve that crisis you know very very quickly. Okay, so this this is I think is a really cool device, especially especially you know a lot of I know a lot of the class here is mechanical engineers, and I know three D printing is, is a really cool uh, you know a really cool emerging technology. So you know I, I thought I figured you guys would like this one a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, maybe you can uh, uh, invest in the machine. Yeah, all right. And the last one I, I want to go over is, is something you know fairly fairly modest. And so this is just a bicycle helmet, but it has um, lights on the back of it. And so you know you might look at this and say you know that's that's kind of lame. And so it's a bike helmet that just you know they just duct tape some lights. But um, but this is really important because you know if you've ever gone biking at night, you know especially on streets where you know the street lights may not be that strong, I think you know you worry all the time if a car is going to hit you, right? And so they I, I know that you know. In terms of safety, they always tell you to wear, you know, light clothing. They tell you to wear a reflective vest, right? Uh, but this is just something else that you can wear to, you know, to really draw attention to yourself to make sure that cars don't hit you at night, right? Um, and so this is this helmet comes with LED lights to basically increase the cycler's uh, visibility. Okay, 
But another really cool feature about this uh, bike helmet is that it comes with this uh, little device as well. And so you can see it on the, on the little pedestal. Um, and that's actually a, a turn signal. And so you can actually uh, hit, hit a button on the, on the console there and it'll, it'll make one side of your helmet blink and to tell, to tell people that you're either turning right or, or turning left. Um, and so that's kind of a, a really nice thing too, because it's, uh, it, it lets people know uh, where you're going, right? And so, and that's another really important feature for um, bikes at night, because, you know, what this company did was they, they interviewed bikers and they said, you know, where do you feel, or, or what, um, I think what they asked was, you know, what, what actions do you take on your bike that you feel put you in the most danger? And I think what the biker says is that we feel, we feel in danger whenever we have to make a turn. And we can't communicate that to drivers or, or pedestrians on the road. And so they've invented this helmet so that you can actually hit a button and it's very clear from your helmet, you know, which way that you want to go so other people can, can adjust to that. Yeah. Yeah, especially in rural places, you know, not many lights around. And so, um, you know, having something like this is, is really, you know, really key. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard too. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've driven around at night too. And I've, I've almost hit people on bikes too. And it's, you know, and, and it's not, you know, and it's, it's not, of course, not anything malicious, but it's, it's hard to see people. And so something like this is, uh, you know, something really important for that. Okay. Um, and so, you know, these are just three, you know, these, these are just three, you know, examples of products that, you know, really did their homework in terms of, you know, um, you know, what are, what are some issues that people are having and how can we use, uh, you know, engineering and how can we use technology to help fix these issues, right? And so maybe, maybe they're not, you know, I don't think anyone can, maybe, maybe this, maybe the 3D printing house one, but I, I don't think any of these can, anyone can argue is going to be bigger than the internet, right? Uh, but they're successful. And I think they make people's lives easier and, and people want to buy them and, and people do, right? And so, you know, before, um, oh, question. Is there a bike, is there a bike function to tell people you're going to bike? I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe they need to make another version of this helmet to have emergency lights as well, so that both lights will blink. Uh, maybe that, maybe that's one thing that uh, someone can invent. Yeah. Um, all right. And so, you know, before we move on uh, with the workshop, I want to turn it to you guys. And so, I want to ask um, if you guys know of any examples of products um, that solve real problems in creative ways. And so, I think, um, you know, and, and I think this is a this is a really interesting um, question to ask at at this kind of junction of of the world because. You know, we've been dealing with COVID for a really long time, and you know, a lot of problems have shown up because of that. And so, have you guys uh, have you guys heard of any products that um, that people have, have developed to help solve these issues? Exoskeletons, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we're looking at exoskeletons in another class. So yeah, it turns uh, it really enhances your your strength. Yeah. Electric scooters in downtown areas. Yeah, no, that's a, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of the, almost the spiritual successor to the, to the Segway. I've, I've seen, I've seen a lot of those electric scooters in, in other places as well. And I think it's, it's a nice, it's a nice compromise. Yeah. Uh, wireless mice. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm hundred percent on board with you on that one. Yeah. Wireless mice, you know, it's, it's not something we think about nowadays, but it's, it's, it's such a nice quality of life improvement over wired mice. Yeah. Prosthetics. Yes. Excellent. Excellent example. Bluetooth, yep, another great example. <laughs> mice without tails. Yeah, all, all, all excellent examples. Yeah, so, you know, think about, uh, you know, think about a lot of the products that you use um, nowadays. Um, you know, a lot of them came from, from places like this where, you know, people looked at, um, you know, uh, problems that people were having and they came up with solutions. And a lot of times, you know, these products don't have to be something physical too. And so, you know, I think especially nowadays we live in the world of like you know application of apps on our phone, right? Um, and so you know another transportation app that uh, you know that um, that developed recently was Uber, right? So Uber is not a is not a specific um, you know um, hard, physical product, but it's obviously something that's uh, that's used a lot. Yeah, DoorDash, excellent. Yeah, DoorDash is is a is a great uh, uh, is a great example too, um, just because you know. People are lazy, right? People people want uh, to go out and pick up food or or, do, or shopping and stuff, but you know people don't want to actually want to actually go out. So DoorDash kind of filled that that niche, right? Um, and so I guarantee you, you know, a lot of these a lot of these products and a lot of these apps that you're using, you know, the companies went through a, a really rigorous, you know, problem solving, um, you know, process for all these. Yeah, yeah, great, yeah, great, great, great examples. Yeah. Okay. And so I think a fair question to ask is, you know, I, I know, you know, a, a lot of you are, might be thinking, um, you know, entrepreneurship sounds really cool, but, you know, I think, I think for a lot of people, 
not everyone wants to, you know, not really, not everyone wants to really start their own company. And, and you know, and, I, and I'm in this boat too. Um, and so, you know, even though I, I think entrepreneurship is really cool, I don't ever see myself really starting a company just because, you know, I, I, it's just, it's just not for me and it's not for everyone. And that's totally okay. Right. Uh, but even so, you know, just the, just the, uh, Start my own university, but even just the just the thought process of thinking entrepreneur entrepreneur entrepreneurially, uh, this can be an asset to your employer to whatever uh, whatever company that you join, right? Um, and so you know, I think a lot of you a lot of you are going to graduate. You know, you're you're, you're all going to get a good job. You're going to work for a good company, and you know, thinking like an entrepreneur can even be an asset in those in those places, right? Because even big established companies, they're they're always looking for ways to grow, or you know, or at least looking for ways to survive in this kind of really um, crazy, um, you know, really competitive marketplace that we have, right? And so to do that, companies are always trying to think of you know what are some new products that we can offer, what are some new services um, to offer value um, in, a, in an ever changing marketplace, right? And so I'll give you two examples here of of, um, of big companies that are always doing this, right? So let's think about Google, right? And so Google, you know, they literally started as just a search engine. Um, and I'm actually old enough to remember, you know, when Google was just a search engine. But look at how many products that Google has now. They have, they have Android, they have Google Docs, they have Drive, they have Google Sheets, Gmail, YouTube, you know, um, I mean, YouTube, they kind of, they kind of swallowed up, but, um, but, you know, they have so many different products, right? And so, you know, at Google, even though you're working for a big company, right, you're not, you're not making your own company, People at Google are, are always coming up with new ideas, and so um, you know, thinking like an entrepreneur and and thinking, you know, what are some problems out there in the world that we can solve is really valuable to the companies like this, right? And honestly, you know, um, you know, if you look if you look internally at Google, they're always coming up with so many cool ideas, but I would say ninety nine percent of them actually never make it out of the company. Um, but you know, it's um, those ninety nine percent are extremely useful for the 1% that, that do make it, right? And so if you want to be successful at a company like Google, like you need to think like an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they make phones too. Yeah, it's, uh, they make a lot of stuff. Right? Uh, another example is, is Amazon, right? And, and so Amazon is another you know, tech company. They're, they're always coming up with new products. And so they have Prime, they have same day delivery, they have Amazon video, you know, I, I don't even know. Jeff Bezos is going to space you know, or something, right? And so, you know, there's, uh, there's lots of opportunities in, in Amazon to think like an entrepreneur as well, right? And even in like really conservative companies. And so if you think of like a company like Boeing or something, right? And so normally you don't really think of Boeing as, as a company that's, you know, really going out there and, and inventing new products like crazy. Um, but, you know, they, but they are thinking like entrepreneurs as well, believe it or not. And so, you know, the reason you don't really hear about it is because, you know, the customers for Boeing are not, you know, average you and I kind of customers. And so the customers for Boeing are like big government contracts or big companies like that. But, you know, but even then, like they have to come up with new products, they have to come up with new services in order to, you know, to stay on top of the, of the market and to, you know, sell their services for, for other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And so with that, you know, I, I want to launch you to our activity. And so this activity is called the three ideas activity. And so let me let me go over kind of a, a, an overview of this, you know, before I, I break you up. OK. And so this activity is going to be done in pairs. And so um, and so I'm going to use the breakout rooms feature in um, on on Zoom. And so unfortunately, with the breakout room feature, you, you don't get to choose your partner. Um, but I think in that way, it'll be more meaningful, too, because then, um, you, you know, you're probably going to be more likely paired with someone that doesn't think like like you. And I think someone like that is, uh, you know, is going to make this um, activity a lot more, a lot more meaningful. Okay. And so after the, um, a uh, question, am I allowed to be your partner? If there's an odd number of people, then I'll, I'll, I'll be the partner for the, uh, for the odd person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be random. It'll be random. Right? Okay. And so um, after you get paired up with the person um, and you download the, uh, the handout that I sent you, um, you know, you're going to, you're going to take turns. And so on the, in the first round, you know, the first person is going to be asking the questions and the other person is going to be answering them. Okay. And so you can think of this as kind of like a, uh, as kind of like your market research. Okay. And so the questions you're going to ask are basically going to help you develop a, um, a product for this, for this person. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there's, you'll see that there's 10 questions on the first page of the handout. And so you're going to ask all 10 questions on the, on the, on the sheet to your partner. 
and then you're going to write down their responses. Okay, and so that should take about five minutes. Okay, then after that you're going to switch, and then uh, and then after that you're going to switch, and the other person is going to do the interview, and the other person is going to answer the question. Okay, all right, and so once you have the answers from your from your partner, then you're going to take some time, uh, maybe about five ten minutes, to come up with um, a new product or a new service or a new service that would meet your partner's needs, okay? And so you're gonna come up with three ideas and hence the name three ideas activity, okay? Um, and so that should take about five minutes. And, I, and, I, and the handout should have, on the second page of the handout, it should have something that kind of helps you organize this, okay? Um, and a couple of notes here. And so the ideas, ideas should be realistic, okay? And so, um, and so you know, don't, don't worry too much about you know, if this is super feasible, but don't, but don't invent something that's obviously not possible. And so don't don't invent like a vibranium um, backpack for your partner because you know vibranium doesn't exist in this world as far as we know. Okay, and don't come up with like you know uh, I think a popular one is you know don't come up with a phone battery that never dies because that's that's also physically that's obviously not physically possible. So you know come up with you know you know let your imagination run wild but you know stay within the confines of reality too. Okay. All right, and then after that um, you know after you come up with your three ideas you're going to share those ideas with your partner. Okay. Um, and at that point, you know, as your partner is sharing their ideas for you, um, you're going to evaluate that idea in terms of, um, you know, whether you like it or, or not. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, so does that, does that make sense? So the, the handout, if you follow the handout, you know, it should be pretty clear about, you know, about all of this stuff. And so, um, you know, um, if you, if you're, if you're kind of confused about what to do, just kind of just follow the handout. Okay. All right. Any, any final questions before we, I split you guys up? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and split everyone randomly. So let me go ahead and stop sharing, okay? Where is breakout rooms? Breakout rooms, all right. And so we have uh, about 30 people here. So let me go ahead and leave here. All right, so I'm gonna go split you guys up into 15 breakout rooms. And so there should be about two of you per breakout room. Um, I think we have actually have an even number exactly. So I think it should work out. But if there's anyone that's individual, then um, I'll go join that room. Okay. All right. So I'll give you guys about 30 minutes for this activity. And then, you know, I'll be checking in if, if I don't partner with anyone, I'll be checking in, you know, on, on random rooms just to see how you're doing. And then after those 30 minutes, we're going to come back and, and kind of debrief everything. Okay. All right. And so enjoy your, your breakup.
Oh, you guys uh, all yeah. done? I thought we were done. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll give a, I'll give everyone else until 2 p.m. and then we'll uh, we'll come back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you guys you guys can just chill out. All right.
All right. It looks like we're uh, we're all back, or we're getting to be back. All right. All right. So how'd you guys uh, how'd you guys enjoy that activity? That was fun. Good. That was cool. Good. Good. All right. So let's uh, let's um, spend a couple let's let's spend a couple minutes debriefing, and then we'll we'll wrap up the lecture for today. Okay. All right, and so uh, let me just ask some, let me start off just by asking some general questions to the whole class. And so you can either um, say I in the, in the chat, or you can, um, I think, or you can use the raise hand emoji, okay? And so how many of you were passionately interested in at least one of the ideas created for you? <laughs> good, good. Great to hear. All right. Um, and so, um, and so, uh, so that's good. So that means that means a lot of you, um, you know, really did a good job of coming up with products for your uh, for your partner. And so, uh, let's let's just take a couple minutes just to, uh, if anyone wants to share, you know, either a product that they came up with for their partner, or a product that their partner came up with them that they really liked. And so, I think we have a time for maybe two or three people. So, if you want to share, just go ahead and turn on your mic and, and go for it. Uh, I have one. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I wasn't able to share it with my partner, Joseph, but uh, he likes video games and he likes nature and he likes board games. And I was thinking like, I could like have like a company or like some, like some type of like, uh, like, like, have you been like a concert in a park, like a concert in the park, but like a convention in a park with like just games, and, like, or like a, like a Frankincense, but like oh. in a park. Nice. It's, like all video games. Nice. Instead. That's, yeah. a, that's awesome. Yeah, I've, I've been to Frankincense before. It's 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 a cool place. So yeah, having that outdoors would be would be really cool. Cause yeah, I've I've been there and it's kind of a cramped um, interior space. And so yeah, combining all those things would be uh, would be really cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else want to share? I have one to share. Go for it. So, um, my partner and I were talking about things that could change, and one of the things that was mentioned was. Um, uh, dirty cities or just trash in the sidewalk so we thought about coming up with some device that would attach to a commercial car and that would clean the streets as you drive nice also oh, kind of like almost like turning every car into like a, a street sweeper almost huh that's exactly right that was the analogy that was used nice oh that's a great that's a great idea I, I'd, I'd love to see that one day actually because i think that would solve that would definitely solve a lot of issues yeah all right, I think we have time for one more. So uh, anyone, uh, anyone else want to share? Oh, I see there's one in the chat, right? Okay, so let's see, cardio neuro converter. My partner really likes the gym and thinks that living expenses are expensive as fuck. That is true. So I thought, uh, so I thought maybe I could design an equipment that can pay him while he works out at the gym. The more he works out, the more money he will make. Yeah, it's interesting. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of, um, you know, I think with streaming and, and with a lot of kind of, um, I think, I don't know what they call it, kind of gig ways to make to make money. I think that would be that'd be a really interesting idea. Yeah. Get trip, get money. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a cool slogan. Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like there was a lot of really cool ideas that that came out. So I'm um, glad you guys uh glad you guys enjoyed that. Okay. All right. So I do have a few more slides um, to cover, you know, in the last about 10, 12 minutes. Okay. And so we're gonna go over those and then we'll uh, wrap it up for the week. Okay. And then any ideas that I have. Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm not sure actually. That's a good. That's a good question. I can. Uh, I can think about it. I, I do have a good friend actually. He's a, he's an entrepreneur, and so he's um, he's developed a company which which is really successful now, which um, called Mighty Health. Um, and he, and so he actually he actually gave a talk last year when I taught this class, but. Um, I just wasn't able to schedule it this year, most mostly on my end because I, I forgot to reach out to him. But uh, but he but his app basically is he, he basically created an application which links like personal training and people that are trying to recover um, from from some kind of um, big surgery. And so I think his motivation was that his dad underwent like a big um, surgery on his heart, but you know having to take care of him every day or or him or his dad knowing how to take care of himself every day was difficult without having a doctor's feedback. And so he kind of had a, he kind of invented a system where like patients can really, you know, rehab really well. And it's come up with a lot of, uh, 
um, a lot of great uh, outcomes. No, 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 I'm not under NDA. No, I'm not, I'm not part of anything. <laughs> um, all right, and so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and finish up with sure. Okay, and so you know, hopefully the the big takeaway that you get that you get from today is entrepreneurs solve problems. Okay, and so you know, if you want to make a new product and you want to be successful, you have to understand the worldview of the customers. You have to understand what problems they're facing and and you know what what are the things that they're interested in, um, so that you can you can solve it, right? Um, but I think you know, even though this slide say entrepreneurs, you know, I think we could you know, exchange that very easily to engineers, right? And so I think, you know, at least at least when I was in school as, as, as an engineer, and, and I still believe this to this day, that engineers, you know, are, are in the business of solving problems too. It's just that we do it through technology, you know? Um, and so, you know, entrepreneurships and engineering, you know, we have the same goal. Um, it's just that, you know, the mindset and the way that we approach it is, is a little bit different. But, but that's not to say that there can't be a, a very happy marriage between entrepreneurship and engineering, okay? All right, and so you might be asking yourself, you know, how do you, you know, how how do you, you know, how beyond this workshop, you know, how how do you kind of encourage yourself to think more like an entrepreneur? And so I, there's four tips here um, that we'll go over really quickly. Okay. Um, and so the first the first tip is to, um, you know, what's uh, described here is keep your finger on the pulse, right? And so kind of stay, and so in other words, kind of stay up to date with current events and current, you know, problems out there in the world, right? And so. Um, you know, there's three kind of way, main ways you can do this. So you can read, you can listen, or you can follow, right? And so you can read um, articles by, from industry. You can read, um, you know, blog posts from, from um, industry leaders that, that, uh, that talk about these things, okay? Um, you can also listen to, um, you know, those same kind of um, content. So you can in, uh, listen to like podcasts, uh, listen to interviews, right, of, uh, of, either industry leaders or even just, you know, regular people and see what they're dealing with, okay? um, And nowadays, you know, if we have, we live in the age of social media, so everyone puts stuff online. And so, you know, you can follow things on, on social media to see what people are, are dealing with too. Although um, nowadays it's a little bit difficult because everyone, everyone, everyone's kind of mad about something on social media and it's hard to kind of pick out, you know, what's the real issue sometimes. So, you know, um, browse, browse with caution. Okay. Uh, tip number two. So tip number two is to pay attention to what your customers are saying and uh, when they are using your product or service. And so this is a tip that's kind of more geared towards, you know, maybe you, you already have a product in, in, uh, in play. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you, if you work at, if you, you know, if you work at somewhere right now, you know, and you work at someplace that's, you know, customer facing. Uh, and so you can, you can just listen to what, to what customers are saying about the product or the service or just things in general. Right. So you can either talk to them directly um, or you can, you know, um, or we just kind of eavesdrop what they say or just kind of read or write what they say on online. Yeah. Yeah. All these are, are great marketing strategies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, you know, I, I want to talk a bit more about interviewing customers because this is, this is, I think, the, one of the best ways to get, um, you know, information on your, on your product. Okay. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's effective ways for you to, um, to um, have an interview. And I think, you know, you guys just went, kind of went through that process through this activity, okay? And so you wanna ask questions like this. And so, you know, we, we've kind of broken it down here to three different categories. And so you, you can ask questions to understand how they're using the product. And so you can ask questions like, walk me through the process of this, or how would you do this? When was the last time you did so-and-so, okay? Um, or you can ask problem, ask um, questions about, you know, the problem, the specific problems that they face. Um, and so you can ask them, you know, what did you find frustrating about this experience and you know, what would you like to improve? Okay. Um, and another thing you can ask is, you know, how, how are they are currently solving these problems? Because, you know, a lot of people run into problems all the time when they use products. And so um, a lot of times we come up with creative ways to, to get around this stuff. Right. Um, and so some questions you can ask is, you know, have you ever thought of changing to another product? Um, or, you know, what are some clever things that you're doing to currently solve this issue that, you know, maybe kind of a workaround? And so, you know, some of these are, uh, are good questions, okay? Um, but the goal, but, you know, one thing that you'll notice about all these questions is that they're all very open-ended, right? Um, and so what you don't want is you, you don't want to ask questions that kind of box your customer into answering with a single word because, you know, the more detail that your customer can give you, uh, or the more detail that you can get from other people through these questions, the more useful that information is going to be for you, right? And so if you if you just get one word answers, or you ask questions that 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 just receive one word answers, 
then um, you know you're you're not going to get very useful information. So you want you want to make sure that you ask open-ended questions. Okay. All right. Tip number three. Tip number three is to make prototypes. Um, and so this is a really important one. And and, um, and this is kind of the advice that I've I've gotten the most from um, from design schools kind of all around the country is that you know if you have an idea that you want to get uh, people's feedback on. You know, actually create something. You know, don't don't just talk about it. Don't just you know um, let it stew in your head. You know, make a prototype, right? And so, and I think nowadays there's so many different ways that you can that you can make something to show people, right? And so you can make like a website. You can make like a very simple app, right? You can make a teaser video. You can make a brochure, a rendering. Um, like if it's you know like if it's an engineering structure, you can you can cat it up in SolidWorks, right? Um, or you can make a modification to an existing object. Right. Don't just let your ideas just be in your head. Don't keep it, you know, in your head just telling people, um, because it's it's one thing it's one thing you know for me to tell you, you know, hey, I have this idea, you know, let me let me get your feedback on it. You know, it's another thing to show, say, hey, you know, this is this is what I'm thinking for this idea. You know, here's like a CAD rendering of it. Here's a here's a here's a video I put together. Okay, actually create something to to show people because that that leaves a much bigger impression than um, you know than just telling them about it. And you know. When you when you think of prototypes, you know it doesn't have to be a fully finished product, right? And so don't don't feel like that you have to finish something all the way before you show people. I think the tendency that people fall into is you know oh I it's this this ah uh, this the idea is not complete. I'm kind of embarrassed of it, so I, I don't want to share. Oh it's oh, it's kind of sloppy. You know I don't want people to make fun of me. But you know you have to, you have to get past that. You have to you know make something rough. Just make something really quick and and show people. And yeah you know some people might say that your idea is stupid, but you know. But that's but that's part of the that's part of the process, right? You have to be kind of willing to live through that, um, you know, embarrassment or live through that, you know, um, of what people say if you really want to create something that that's really meaningful to people. Okay, and so don't be afraid to create something. Don't be afraid to show people, um, especially nowadays. I think it's it's a lot easier to show people with uh, with you know social media and all that stuff, right? So put something out there, see what people think, and then use that feedback to refine your your product, right? Um, and so you know, I think. I think at least for me, you know, that this is kind of the number one advice that I've gotten from, you know, all my friends that are entrepreneurs and, and everyone that kind of works in this in this space. Okay. All right. And tip number four is to seek feedback from potential customers. And so this is a little bit different than, you know, earlier on in the tips, but, um, you know, for people that you that you would want to be your customers or you think that, you know, would be interested in your product, you know, actually go and, and talk to them and, and see, you know, what feedback that they have. And so after you do tip three, you know, say that you you created like a prototype for your for your product, you know, just put it out there and see what people think, right? Um, you know, um, the internet is is a really useful tool because I think you can put stuff on the internet and people will tell you their honest opinion because you know it's it's totally anonymous, and people will say some some hurtful things, they will say some silly things, um, but you know that's good. Like you want people's honest feedback, and you know it's the honest feedback that's really going to make um, make or break your product, okay? All right, any questions on uh, on this so far? Okay. All right, and so the last thing I, I want to um, show you guys is, you know, as students, you know, um, I want to talk to you about some of the opportunities that you have to kind of encourage this kind of thinking and, and, and get kind of more used to it and even get credit for it, right? And so, um, you know, there's there's a lot of guest talks that uh, that happen and that happen at this campus. Um, because, you know, we have a very big um, business school, so we have the Mihailo uh, um, Business School here, okay, so they're always um, bringing in guest, uh, guest speakers and experts um, to talk about, you know, their experience in, in, these, in these fields, okay. Um, you can even go to um, what's called an incubator, um, which can help you basically develop an early stage idea, okay. Or if you want to take a course on this, you can take uh, one of these two courses here, and so you can take Management 465A, or management 465B, um, and believe it or not, you'll you can get credit for this. And so these classes actually count as technical electives. I think for every engineering discipline um, in our college. Um, and so if you're looking for a technical elective and, and nothing seems interesting to you from the engineering catalog, you know, why don't you consider one of these management classes? And you'll you'll take it with business students, and you'll learn how to actually create a new company. And I've I've had I've had students that have taken this before, and you know everyone has has said it's been a really positive experience. So. Definitely check these out if you uh, you know if you're interested. Okay, uh, and there's also you know a lot of design classes and workshops that you can take um, as well. Okay, 
Um, and so, you know, don't be afraid to ask for feedback from professors, from mentors, or, you know, from your, of your fellow peers or, or anyone, okay? Um, and one person in particular that you can ask for feedback is um, Dr. Atul um, Tekshundani. And so his, um, and so his, um, his um, contact information is at the bottom of the slide. And so he's actually you know, in a formal partnership with our engineering college here to provide entrepreneurship education for our students, right? And so, like I said at the beginning, like he's he's the one that actually created this workshop, um, and he gave it to me graciously to to give to in this class. But you know, he's he's really interested in seeing you know what are some engineering ideas that you guys have that could be taken to market too. So, if you want to, you know, if you're interested in this more, you know, don't be afraid to shoot him an email. I, I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to you. Okay. All right. Any final questions before we uh, we wrap it up for the week? Okay. All right. And so, um, and so that's it for today's class. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed the workshop for today. Um, and so that's, and so this is, this is really it for, for economics. And so next week, next week's going to be a transition. week. And so on Tuesday, uh, we're going to be covering like a, just an introduction to engineering ethics. And then on Thursday, we're going to take our midterm. And so, you know, next week's going to be a bit of a transition. Okay. All right. And so tomorrow, you know, look forward to the review video. And so I'll post that on YouTube when it's done and I'll notify everyone through email. And then um, best of luck studying this weekend. All right, so have a great weekend, everyone. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the lecture today, and I will see you next week. <coughs> All right, question. Does it require prototyping in the courses, or is it just discussions? I think there's some prototyping involved, too. Yeah. I think they go through the whole process, and I think it's very hands-on. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, definitely check it out if you're, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Take care. Take care of yourself too.